everybody, it's Tyler here at MSC Checking Team number 1684, the Chimeras. Chimeras, a big win last week, by the way, coming in. Uh, congratulations to Troy, too. Absolutely phenomenal performance there. Uh, Chimeras, take a look at their robot here. Fantastic machine. Of course, we'll be covering their intake. Many uh, stage arm we'll be talking about, including some cool modifications that have been done on this robot, too. And, of course, some of the programming. And they're using some custom wheels on their short drive as well, too. Let's learn a little bit more about Chimeras and their charged up robot coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first-based camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsor camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. If you are attending championships, come to the FUN and FRC Discord Meetup on Thursday, April 20th from 11 to 11.45 a.m. in Conference Room 360 CNF on the third floor. We'll have games, giveaways, time to socialize, and a chance to meet the FUN and FRC Discord staff. Get a reminder RSVP on the FUN or FRC Discords, and we'll see you at championships. Millie, let's start off on your robot talking about you're doing some custom wheels on your Swerve as well. So talk to me about uh, why you chose to go a custom wheel path and what it is, how it's working out for you. So this year we decided to use the Rev Max Swerve Swerve Pods. And when we were testing, we decided that with their plastic wheels that they had, that um, they didn't do well during um, defense. So we decided to switch over to the aluminum billet thrifty wheels. And so we're using our own um, black, was it, Nitro tread on it. And uh, they've been working great for us. So, so essentially, you modified the uh, the rev uh, the rev drive to have thrifty wheels on it. What what did you have to do to make those modifications? Um, so originally at Kettering, we started off with having these same wheels, but they were three D printed. So most of Kettering, we were running three D printed wheels, and then uh, they weren't as sturdy as we hoped them to be. So we switched over to the aluminum ones, and these have lasted us through like what three competitions now. Oh, like you haven't had to swap them out at all? Uh, no. That's really impressive yeah. on there. So congrats on that. Um, yeah, and, and one thing I'll ask you, uh, for teams that are looking at doing sword drive in the future, do you have any advice for them? Um, our team actually put out a white paper for our sword drive that our programmers made. So if you guys want to learn sword drive, go out, read the white paper, kind of learn how we did it. We're going to swap it over to Jack, who's going to talk about the intake on your robot here. So talk to you about uh, what the intake is, what's gone into it, and uh, how it's been working out for your team so far. So uh, it's been working pretty well this season. Uh, we're able to pick up cubes in here, and we have a holding power to hold in cubes in cones. So the cones will come in and be attached with the, uh, and the two gray wheels, and then the cubes will go in farther back here. So uh, on this composition, how did you figure out that this wheel comp was going to be the best option for Chimeras? Uh, well, in the, we tried to make another prototype recently, and it wasn't really working out as well as this one was. And so we kind of just kind of kept this as prototyping. And I noticed it looks like you have a couple of sensors in there. Could you talk about that? Yeah. Uh, the LiDAR here helps us uh, detect if there's a cube or a cone inside to do the holding power and uh, shoot it out. And I know we'll be talking a little bit more in the programming uh, a little bit later as well, too. Uh, the, the other thing I'll ask on here, uh, at least on this housing right here, can you talk to me a little about uh, what this is? Oh, this is a little housing module with all the uh, electronics in it, like our Spark Maxes, and uh, all the other wires for the Neos. Very cool. Uh, as we continue on uh, with this uh, arm as well, too, there's a lot of cool stuff to go into, multi-stages that you've been doing for that. Uh, Garrett's going to be talking more about uh, what this arm is uh, comprised of. And uh, I, I know the argument early was, is it a three- or four-stage elevator? So talk to me more about that. Yeah, this is a, a four-stage uh, West Coast great arm. Uh, came in a kit. We had a couple of shipping, pro shipping problems with it at first. Uh, but we got it all put together. It's a... It's driven out by three constant four springs and driven in by a gearbox down here at the bottom. And attached to our gearbox, uh, we have this belt and it loops in our wire for our intake. So it drives out and comes in at the same time as our arm would go in and out. And we added these custom uh, arms out of aluminum and Lexan to give some more power for the arm being driven out. And our arm sits on a pivot Driven down here by two gearboxes uh, with tw uh, Rev 25 link chain. And uh, these are Rev uh, sprockets. So our game pieces, we use uh, the double substation and it brings it up and sucks it in like that. Big wheels are for the cones and the gray wheels are for the cubes. And then how are you keeping like your, uh, your CG low on your robot? Like where's kind of your weight in regards to consideration for your elevator when you're out so far? 
the weight is kind of in the middle. Like it's just all here. It's it's held in. The battery helps too when it when it's extended out. Sure. And are you doing any sort of like ballast or anything like that in your robot, or it's just everything's just packaged as is? Uh, no, we've talked about maybe adding some weight, but so far no ballast. Let's talk about some of the programming that's going on this robot. Kennedy's going to be covering uh, more about that. So, Kennedy, I, I'd love to just hear more about, uh, you know, what's gone into on this end. You know, I watched your last match, and you were able to just score with ease, so I know there's a lot of uh, good automation presets that have gone to it, and anything else you want to cover as well? Um, we use the limelights here and here a lot for our programming and um, in our autons. We use this limelight to find our first cube when we go to pick it up in auton. Um, on our side auton, we use this line light to place it using the April tag. We also have um, a string pot on the side of the arm here that tells how far our arm is out. Um, that was very helpful for coding like automated set points for our operator to press a button and it goes to like the middle level for cones or the upper level for cubes. Or like we have set points for all of the positions on the grid to make it easier for our operator to place them very quickly. And efficiently. So you've had a few events uh, so far before coming to MSC. Mm -hmm. Have you done anything uh, in regards to like improvements uh, from your uh, code or autonomous or anything like that throughout the season? Um, we have changed a few things. We did have a lidar on the arm here to see how far it was out, but it wasn't very accurate and it would cut out a lot. So we put the string pot in. It was very easy to switch in code to make the values the same, so we didn't have to change any of our set points. Um, our string pot had a much wider range of values. It went from 0 to 8,800, and our LIDARs only went from 300 to 1,100. So we just divided that number by 10 and added 300 to make the values the same so we didn't have to change our set points um, after Kettering. Well, Chimeras, you have an absolutely fantastic looking robot. Thank you so much for taking the time to tell us more about it. We wish you best of luck here at MSE and hopefully even beyond as well, too. So good luck the rest of the way. Thanks a lot. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first base camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsor camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gd forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.